so this video is a brief description of the activity and the half-life. Uh, so the activity of a sample of any radioactive nuclide is the rate at which the nuclei of its constituent atoms decay, okay? Um, so if n is the number of nuclei present in the sample at a certain time, then the activity of the sample is minus the n over dt. Uh, so the minus sign used here is to make r positive, okay? Because dn over dt is uh, of course intrinsically negative okay so uh, the SI units of activity is named after Becquerel so one Becquerel is equal to one decay per second uh, but the activities encountered in practice are usually so high that the mega Becquerel and the giga Becquerel are more often appropriate uh, but the traditional unit of activity is the Curie okay um, and it was originally defined as the activity of one gram of radium. Um, but the precise value of the Curie changed as the methods of measurement uh, improved. And now it is defined as 3.7 times 10 to the power uh, 10 dK per second or 37 giga becker. And as an example, uh, one kilogram of ordinary potassium has an activity of about one millicurie, okay? And this is because uh, it contains a small proportion of the radioisotope uh, K4019. Uh, so measurements of the activities of radioactive samples show that in every case, they fall off exponentially, as in this graph, okay? Um, so this is the graph of R versus time for a typical radionuclide. And as you can see, uh, in every five-hour period, uh, regardless of when the period starts, the activity uh, drops to half of what it was at the start of the period. Uh, so as you can see, in the next five-hour period, the activity also drops to half. Uh, and this is the definition of the half-life of the nuclide, okay? So it is the period uh, where the activity drops to half of what it was uh, at the start of the period. Uh, and every uh, radionuclide has a characteristic half-life. Some half-lives are only a millionth of a second and others are billions of years. So this behavior uh, means that the time variation of activity uh, follows this formula, okay? And lambda here is known as the decay constant and it has a different val value for each radionuclide. Uh, so at t equal the half-life period, uh, the activity will drop to half of its initial value, so r will be equal to r naught over 2, okay? Um, so if we take the natural logarithms of both sides of this equation, we get uh, this expression for the half-life. Uh, so for example, if uh, t half is equal to 5 hours, we get this value for the decay constant, okay? Um, uh, so the larger the decay constant, the greater the chance a given nucleus will decay in a certain period of time. Uh, so this expression follows if we assume a constant probability lambda per unit time for the decay of each nucleus of a given nuclide. Uh, so lambda is the probability per unit time. And so this quantity lambda dt is the probability that any nucleus will undergo decay in a time interval of dt. Uh, so, suppose that a sample contains n undecayed nuclei, then the number dn um, that uh, decay in a time interval of dt is the product of the number of nuclei n and the probability lambda dt that each will decay in a time interval of dt, okay? So, dn will be equal to minus n lambda dt. Uh, and the minus sign uh, is because n will decrease with increasing t. Uh, so from this we get this equation and then we can integrate each side. Uh, so from this we get this expression so it gives the number n of undecayed nuclei at the time t 
Um, in terms of the uh, decay probability per unit time lambda of the nuclei involved and the number n naught of undecayed nuclei at the time t equals zero. Uh, so this figure shows the alpha decay of the gas radon 222 into the polonium isotope 218. So if we start with uh, 1 milligram of radon uh, uh, in a closed container, then uh, after a half-life of uh, 3.82 days, um, only 0.5 milligram will remain. Okay, so half of the initial value will remain after the half-life of 3.82 days. Uh, and after another half-life uh, period, um, only 0.25 milligram will remain uh, from the initial 0.5. Uh, so let's calculate the time for 60% of radon to decay, okay? So using this equation, we can take the natural uh, logarithm of both sides and we get an expression for T. Uh, then we calculate the decay constant by substituting for the half-life of 3.82 days, okay? Um, and T uh, here will be equal to this value, uh, lin, uh, n naught over n. So n is the remaining undecayed nuclei, okay? Um, so the remaining is uh, 1 minus 0.6 n naught, okay? So the remaining is 40% uh, of the initial um, number of nuclei, and this gives t equal 5.05 uh, days. So the fact that radioactive decay follows uh, an exponential law implies that uh, this phenomenon is statistical in nature. Um, so every nucleus in a sample of a radionuclide has a certain probability of decaying, but there is no way to know in advance um, which nuclei will actually decay in a particular time span. Uh, but if the sample is large enough, uh, so it contains many nuclei, then the actual fraction of it that decays in a certain time will be very close uh, to the probability for any individual nucleus to decay. Uh, so to understand what it means that the decay probability uh, is constant with time, let's say that the half-life is five hours, okay? then uh, this signifies that every nucleus of this isotope has a 50% chance of decaying in every 5-hour period. Uh, but this does not mean that uh, there is a 100% probability of the nucleus to decay in 10 hours, right? Because a nucleus does not have a memory and its decay probability per unit time is constant until it actually uh, does decay. Uh, so this means that if the half-life is 5 hours, then in 10 hours there is a 75% probability of decay, okay? And this increased to 87.5% in 15 hours, and then in 20 hours the probability of decay will be higher to 93.75% and so on. Uh, and the reason is that uh, in every 5-hour period, the probability is 50%. Also, one thing to note here is that the half-life of a radionuclide is not the same as its mean lifetime, okay? So the mean lifetime is the reciprocal of its decay probability, okay? Uh, so if uh, uh, the half-life is 5 hours, then the uh, mean lifetime is 7.2 hours. Uh, also, we can express the activity R in terms of the N, which is the, the number of undecayed nuclei, okay? So R is equal to lambda N. So this shows that the activity is proportional to the number of atoms uh, present in the sample, okay? Uh, so let's say the activity of 1 milligram of radon uh, can be calculated by finding the number of atoms N and using this expression, uh, it is equal to 155 Curie, okay? And you can show that a week later using this expression, a week later this activity drops to 43 Curie.
Uh, so radioactivity makes it possible to establish the ages of many geological and biological specimens. Um, so because the decay of any particular radionuclide is independent of its environment, um, the ratio between the amounts of that nuclide and its stable daughter in a specimen depends on the age of that specimen. Uh, so the beta-active carbon isotope C14-6, known as radiocarbon, has too many neutrons, so it's unstable and it will beta decay into nitrogen-14 um, with a half-life of 5,730 years. Uh, so, living plants and animals, uh, they all have the same ratio of radiocarbon to ordinary carbon of uh, approximately 1.3 times 10 to the minus 12. Uh, so, when they die, they no longer take in radiocarbon from the environment or the food. Um, but the radiocarbon uh, carbon they already contain will keep decaying away to nitrogen, okay? Um, so after 5,730 years, they have only one half as much of radiocarbon left um, relative to their total carbon content as they had as living matter, okay? Um, and after 11,520 years, only one-fourth as much. And so on. Uh, so by determining the proportion of radiocarbon to ordinary carbon, it is possible to evaluate the ages of ancient objects and remains of organic origin, okay? Um, so this method, it makes it possible to date uh, mummies, wooden implements, cloth, and similar artifacts from ancient civilizations um, as, as old as 50,000 years, okay? Um, which is about nine half-lives of uh, radiocarbon. Uh, but to date, for example, rocks, uh, geologists use uh, radionuclides of much longer half-lives. Uh, so, as an example, suppose that we have a piece of charcoal containing 25 grams of carbon um, and it is found in some ruins of an ancient city, okay? Um, so, suppose the sample shows a C14 uh, radiocarbon um, activity of 250 decay per minute. Uh, so, the question is, how long has the tree from which this charcoal came been dead? Uh, so, we use this equation, so we want to find R over R0, okay? So, R0 is equal to lambda and note, the number here of the uh, radiocarbon nuclei, okay? And this number is related uh, to the number of ordinary carbon um, through this ratio. So, uh, it is equal to R0 and uh, 0 So, this is equal to the number of moles times Avogadro's number, okay? So, uh, this, uh, the number of moles is equal to the mass over the molar mass, uh, which is uh, 12 gram per mole, okay? Uh, so, we now evaluate this ratio, which is R over R0, and we get this expression. And we substitute for the activity when the piece of charcoal was found, which is 250 decay per minute, um, and the molar mass, and the half-life, and R0 here, um, and uh, the mass of the carbon in the piece of charcoal, and the Avogadro's number, and we, um, we convert uh, minutes here to seconds and years to seconds, and we get uh, 0.667. Uh, and substituting here, we get uh, T equal to 3.4 times 10 to the 3 years. Uh, so, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.